Hello and welcome to the new series that I'm doing here looking at tips in Cocos 2DX. As an explanation of why I'm doing this, this series, an introduction, you'll maybe know by now that I've done a series making sort of a copy, a, a clone of the Flappy Bird game called Simple Flappy Robin. At the moment I think there are about 32, 33 videos done of that. I'll be finishing that series probably in the next couple of weeks. But during uh, sort of the writing of that series, despite I was the fact I was writing the application as simply as possible and as quickly as possible, so no, and you can read uh, into that sentence in brackets, i.e. not as robustly as possible, um, I realized that I was implementing um, things, various things during the series that were things that you always want to look up when you're learning how to use Cocos 2DX. And certainly when I started, things that I was always having to research on the internet, blah, 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 to find out how you do things. So I thought it might be quite nice to do a few videos, I don't know how many, see what pops into my mind, and how you do various little things, so like subclassing sprites, actions, calling functions from actions, dealing with CC array, and all that kind of good stuff inside the framework that um, at first glance, especially when you see it on forums, so Stack Overflow or something like that, can appear very confusing, especially with the way the answers usually descend into one-upmanship and everything. So I thought I would try and present things here in apart from this video, which is probably going to drag on a little bit, but of the rest of the videos in sort of five to maximum ten minute segments to just simply demonstrate how something's done. The assumption I've made for this video is that you can create a project in Cocos 2DX and if you don't know how to do this then go and have a look at uh, the first video of, and of the Simple Flappy Robin series and indeed the second video, part 1.1 I think I called it, which involved first of all the setup on the Mac and then the setup on Windows. I, if you're not familiar with my videos, I tend these days to record primarily on the Mac because uh, I do. And with Cocos 2DX, it's a cross-platform framework. So once you've got everything downloaded and running, it won't make actually a difference what you're going to program this on. If you're using Linux, then I'll make the assumption that you know what you're doing anyway and won't have any problems. But I've had a few comments from Windows users where some things don't work or something like that. Um, so have a look at those videos if you're starting out for the first time with Cocos 2DX. Otherwise, you'll see here in the terminal I've created already uh, inside the project, uh, sorry, the tools directory and project creator for Cocos 2DX here. You can see I've run this line to create a project called Cocos 2DX Tips. It's created the relevant directories for the various platforms. And I've run the Mac project here. If you're on Windows, you'll probably want to open in Visual Studio the Win32 solution project. If you're on Linux, you'll probably, I don't know, do the Android or something like this, whatever you like, really. Um, so once you've done that and created the project, we can have a look at what we're going to do in this series. So we get this template from created by Cocos 2DX. And all I want to do in this video is I want to make a template that um, we'll use as a basis for every one of the videos from now on. So I'll always start from the template that I create in this video. And I'm, the files we're going to change are just these two here, the Hello World Scene, CPP and H. And when I've finished with that, I'll make these available for download in a zip file. And I'll reference that in each of the videos as well. So you have exactly the same starting point without making the changes that we're going to make. The only thing I've done, which is sort of Mac specific, or maybe if you're using Win32, is I've made the size of the window 800 by 500, so it's more or less the same aspect ratio as what I'm recording with here, which makes zooming and things a little bit more convenient. So the first thing we want to do then is have a look at what we've got. If I just run the project here from that's provided, you can see we've got the standard logo from Cocos 2DX with the Hello World and the Off button here. And I want to actually get rid of all that so that we start from a blank screen. So inside helloworldscene.cpp, you'll see that we've got this initialization function, init function here. And below where we create this origin from the get visible origin, I just want to highlight all of the code that's below there and just take this out, leaving the return true, and then just save the file. So this means now nothing will be added onto the layer. And the other thing I want to remove is this callback, which is um, the function called when the close button was pressed, which has been just been removed from the initialization. We don't need this function either, so I'll just remove this out as well, because I don't want the exit button. Inside hello world scene.h then, I'm going to remove from the header file the close button callback. And now what I want to do is add a couple of things of 
our own. So inside a private section here, I'm going to add a variable called game time and this is stuff remember that will be present in every single video from now on as a starting point so we've got our game time to float and that's simply going to be updated every time the animation updates which has a target of 60 frames a second this you can see inside the app delegate.cpp here where the animation interval is set we want to we update with the amount of time since the previous interval and we'll just keep a record of the total game time uh, each time we update and what we'll also do is we'll make a function and we'll call this function game update which will be the up and the update function that is called every animation frame taking in a delta time as an argument or a dt and what we're going to do is schedule this function to be called every frame the other thing I want to do is before we go into the implementation of this is to have a look at touches actually no let's deal with this first and then we'll go into touches so inside hello world scene.cpp I'm just going to copy this hello world with two colons after it and make a load of space here and then type void whoops void space and now it should have the game update for us it does now just type the float and dt so we have our data to delta time there and I want to do is just log to the console the time now when you log something you use this macro cc log and if you right click on this and go to the definition inside the Cocos 2dx framework it's somewhere inside here I can't exactly remember where you'll see that this macro then deals with all the different platforms you might be um, logging to or working on and then prints to the console or um, well, yeah, to the IDE's console or to the terminal console or whatever, so you can see the log output of uh, the application. And CC log works exactly the same as a printf, basically, but appends a new line character. So here we'll just say um, a game time. Now, this is something that I won't have this logging in all of the projects, otherwise the console will be full, but we'll put it in for now and then just want to show our game time variable of course before that's called we want to actually update the game time variable so we'll just say a plus equals and delta time now if we run the application nothing would happen here because this function is not being called every frame so what we need to do is actually schedule to call that function and there are a number of ways of doing this um, to, ha to have a function called every um, every frame. One of these is using this schedule update function which actually call a standard expected update function inside the class if it's um, overridden. But we're not going to do that, we're just going to specify the function that we want calling, so I prefer to do it this way. So we simply say then this and then schedule and then what we have to do is simply say we don't give an interval or anything for scheduling our function because we want it to go every frame as often as possible so we then have a schedule selector and then it asks for our selector which is our hello world class and then the game update function and we don't need anything there so that's all we actually need to do to schedule in the calling every animation frame of this function so I'm just going to save now and run the application here and obviously we have a blank screen but the interesting part is happening down I'll just move this out the way in the console here and you can see now the seconds are counting up as our game time float is updated. So we can be fairly sure that the um, function's being called, which is important when we're dealing th with things obviously in the game for updating our sprites and things like that. Okay then, so that's the first stage done and what I'm going to now do is actually just comment out this CC log line here because we don't actually need this to be filling up our console with log unnecessary log every time. I just wanted to show you that this function's now being scheduled. So the last thing to deal with then in this video and then the sort of basic uh, schematic for all of our projects is complete is we want to deal with touches and there are three functions that deal with this one of them is called void cc touches began and they take as an argument two things one of them is a cc set which is simply a collection if you like of um, objects and in this case there'll be touch cc touch uh, objects so we have a pointer to this set and then we also have an event which I'll discuss later on in detail what these cc events are um, but we won't be using that anyway for a good while in these videos so you don't need to worry about this so we have one called touches began and 
then we have one called touches moved and oops moved and we have one called touches ended and these deal obviously then with multi touch as well which is why we have a set of the touches now the other thing that we need to do uh, inside here is these functions are actually overridden functions that exist in, I think it's defined in CC layer. I can't remember, or it might be CC node. I can't remember exactly which class has these functions originally defined, but you might not want in your layer to be detecting touches, in which case you wouldn't want to override these, but we do. Which, as you know, then in C++ it's a bit different to Objective C. You need to, in your class each time, actually type the virtual keyword so the program knows that you're um, these are functions are overridable and you're overriding them then in this class. So what we'll do then is copy these three functions now that we have for touches began, touches moved and touches ended. And I'm just going to drop these below the game update inside here. And now the slight ball ache, which is dropping in the brackets, just scroll things down a bit. And I'll knock off the virtual keyword in a second, which we don't need either. And the last thing we need, of course, is the hello world in front of these as well. Otherwise, the thing, the compiler won't be very happy. OK, then. So we have our touches began, touches moved and touches ended. And how does this work? Well, when you first put your finger or click with the mouse, touches began is called if this layer is set to receive touches. And depending on how many fingers have gone down or whatever, the touches will be contained with their um, OpenGL coordinates of exactly where they happened. Touches moved is then called each time one of these touches that was started is then moved, which is up to, with its updated coordinate. And touches ended is when the touch that began then ends, so the finger or the mouse is then lifted, or the click from the mouse is no longer held down on the screen. So just to demonstrate very quickly here uh, how we might, um, or how we actually get this touch in the coordinates in pixels on our screen, not the GL coordinates. Uh, well, it's quite simple. We need a CC set iterator, which is an iterator, which you're familiar with um, C++ you'll know about, which is simply used to go through this collection and get a pointer to each object inside that uh, collection. We then want a CC touch. Sorry, not to get a pointer, sorry, it's it's meant to, to get access to each of the pointers inside this collection, to be completely correct. We want then a touch, which is what we'll be casting um, the objects inside this set. We'll be casting them to a touch and their pointers to a touch object. And then we want a CC point, which is a structure which is uh, simply the touch converted to the screen coordinates in pixels. So we can then say i equals, and then we want so p touch, and then it's uh, begin, and we want i is not equal, and then p touch and end, and then plus plus i again. If you do a lot of C plus plus, you'll be familiar with this anyway. If you don't, it might be a little bit of a shock, but oh well, it's not too difficult to understand. And then what we want to do simply then is cast to a type of CC touch uh, pointer. Then what we have actually accessed by i like so, dereferenced. And now we can say that if we actually found something there, so if we have a touch, then what we can say is the tap is equal to touch and get location, and then that can, then gets the location as a CC point of where our touch was in pixels on the screen. So what we'll do is then is we'll make a log another uh, log here, and we'll call it CC touches began, and just say at and then we'll put a percentage and a point. Let's put a point 0.1f so it's not too big. And then a comma and a point 0.1f. And then tap.x and tap.y, like so. Should be all we need to do. So I'll just build the application there. And now just run the application. I make some touches on the screen and nothing's happened because I've forgotten to do one critical thing and that is you actually actually have to tell the layer to um, receive touches and by doing this you call set touch enabled and set this then to true and this now allows this layer to receive touches and I'm sorry I forgot to do that just now just run the application again 
and hopefully things are okay. So I'll move the window up a little bit. And now you can see that I'm clicking on the screen and it's called Touches Began at the relevant point. I've already said how the other functions work here with moved and ended and I'll leave you if you like just to copy and paste this code down into here like so. So that's it then for this video. This is then the base state that we'll be using for all of the videos in this series from now on where basically we've got one layer on our Hello World scene and this layer is enabled to receive touches and also has uh, every frame a game update function called which keeps track of the total time the application has been running. So next video then we'll get on with the first topic of the series which will be looking at how and why we subclass a CC sprite. So till the next video, thanks very much for watching and comments, questions, criticisms, welcome as always on YouTube.